here you go. They didn't have the kind you wanted. I hate this kind. I'm sorry, hon. I wish they had something with coating in it. Well, look, if it's that bad, maybe you should stay an extra day. No, it's not that bad. Besides, if I'm gonna be sick, I'd rather be sick at home. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Flight 178 to New York is now ready for boarding. At this time, it's you. Well, I'm sure glad it happened today instead of yesterday. Can you imagine if I had it felt like this yesterday when we were camping? See you in a week. Now, listen. Okay, I know you're going to be busy with a delegate counting in New York, but when you get to Washington on Tuesday, the kids will expect a call. Wish you were coming. Yeah, sure you do. Yeah, I really do. Love you. Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> Stuart, if you could hang, please. <coughs> Hi there. Hi. <coughs> I should warn you, I'm getting a cold or something. It's okay. <coughs> Just got over one myself. And, yeah, I have the tetracycline to prove it. We should never have been kicked over to contagious diseases. This whole thing should have been handled by the Department of Sanitation. How are they going to handle it during a garbage strike? Well, hi, Lionel. There's a follow-up you want. Ooh, great. Oh, Lionel, you know uh, Dr. Prescott? Oh, by name only. Hi, Lionel Katz. Dr. Katz contributed to the garbage analysis we did for the mayor? Yeah, just the animal waste section. Lionel, give Dolores back her desk. What? Now? Now! <laughs> Look, Nora, yeah. we're up to our butts in vaccinations. We have to stop everything to analyze garbage. No, no, I'm sorry. The garbage strike is a political problem. Jake's from Indiana. Oh, really? Hey, Jake, I was in Indianapolis once. Yeah? That was even less interesting than I thought it was going to be. You know, I thought the whole purpose of this department was to protect the people's health. Oh, can you believe it? Someone is putting politics over people's health in New York? Jake, let me tell you what's going on here. The Democratic National Convention is going to be in our town in one more week, right? And the networks are going to televise our great big piles of garbage all over the country. So, covering for the mayor, is that why we're in public service? Well, that's not why I'm in public service. I'm in public service because I can't stand sick people. It's nice to have met you. And you too. All right? No. <laughs> you're taking this too personally, don't. Don't get emotionally involved. Just do your job and go home. I'm not sure I can do that. Oh, you've only been here a couple of months. You'll figure it out. Yeah, maybe. I hope not. How is she? Well, I think she's coming down with a flu or something. You don't mind my... Well... What? Are you Congressman Phillips? That depends. Are you a member of the National Rival Association? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm a teacher. Well, in that case, I am Congressman Calvin Phillips. Thank you. Pauline Stiles? I've seen you on CNN several times. Oh, well, it's very nice to meet you. you. You said you were a teacher? Yes, fifth grade. I don't usually sit in first class, but I won this trip on a game show, so here I am. <laughs> really? Great. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Poor thing. Well, we'll all be home soon. Yes. <laughs> Night, Janet. Oh. <laughs> Give you a hand with uh, some of that? No, thanks. Here you go. Oh, Mary, thank you. Homer? Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm glad to see you're not getting uh, personally involved in your work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, what are you going to be doing this weekend? Handing out condoms to strangers on the subway? Well, I'm still a little, a little afraid of the subway. That'll wear off. Yeah? Yeah. Soon you'll be very afraid of the subway. Oh, good. Thank you. Listen, Nora. Um, 
Well, I was wondering if you needed a hand, because um, I haven't got any plans this weekend. Ah. Really, I know it would help me get a handle on this stuff. No, no, really, this is uh, just uh, stuff I have to read, you know, just reading stuff. Reading stuff? Taxing! See you Monday. All right. I'll be change your mind. I'll let you know. Thanks. All right. Have a good weekend. Yeah, you Bye. too. Bye. Bye-bye. Styles, uh, can I offer you a ride home as well? No thanks, my car's parked in the lot. <coughs> Honey, you gonna be all right? She feels awfully hot. Well, whatever she has, uh, you can be sure of catching it. I hope not. I took all my sick days just to take this trip. Uh, thank you. Nice to have met you, Congressman Phillips. Likewise. You take care now, here? Yeah? We'll get her home right away. Bye. Bye-bye. We'll be making two stops, driver. Uh, first, we'll be going to... <laughs> 1099 Park Avenue. 1099 Park? Yes, sir. 1099 Park Avenue. Thanks, uh, why don't you help with her luggage, okay? Here you go. <laughs> Thanks again. Uh, you sure you don't want me to? No, no, it's okay. I'll, I'll be fine. Well, um, feel better? I'll try. Okay, bye. Well, where to, sir? Uh, Trump Tower. I'll walk from there. you who are you <coughs> have you seen my parents <coughs> lo siento señorita no hablo inglés <coughs> okay <coughs> gracias thank you i'm sick i want to lie down okay <coughs> just leave the bags <coughs> gracias thank you Ah, Congressman Phillips, good to have you back. Uh, the Amar Corps Industries representative left you the keys you requested. Thanks. Is, has anyone else arrived? I really don't know, sir. I've only been on half an hour or so. Thank you.
Charlene. You look incredible. I was almost sure that you weren't going to be here. Well, I almost didn't come. What did you tell Mike? I told him I was going to buy some dresses for the convention. I don't think he was even listening to me, but... But Cindy and Pierce were in the room. Calvin, I'm lying to my children now. I'm lying I'm to sorry. my children. Charlie, I'm sorry. Where are we going with this? I mean, is it leading somewhere? Mike would fight for the children. I know he would. Even if it meant losing a seat in Congress, I don't think I could bear that. Why are we doing it? Why are you doing it? Is it because you're bored? Charlene. Don't. I, yeah, but I. Just don't say it. I had some dinner delivered. I'll go heat it up. Just tell us your name. 
Jane Doe. I don't have any other Jane Doe's in here tonight. 85 palpation. Hillary. Call a code. Where's Dr. Lipsky? All right, Scalpel Bergman. Got it. Trake. Let's go. Section. All right. Bagger Bergman. Doctor. She's arrested. Get the board. Damn it. Why aren't you breathing? She tested HIV negative. Negative gonorrhea. Lift her up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, my God. It's a hemorrhagic rash. Dr. Lipsky. We're losing her. Adrenaline. Damn it. Call the team. Force. Bang. Come on. One. Did you ID the body? No, 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 no. Look, you've done everything right. I'll be right there. Dolores, finish that up. Sure. Nora, what is it? Hopefully nothing. What? Look, I've got to go to Manhattan General. I'll tell you on the way. Interesting, yes? Very. I checked with all the other hospitals. Nothing similar's been admitted. I don't see how this could be an isolated case. But if this is really Yersinia... The admitting papers call it a drug overdose. Hmm. Is the body still here? Yeah, in isolation. I had it moved up from the morgue. Do we have to do an autopsy? What about a uh, fluorescent antibody test? <laughs> Funny. Hey, where'd you find this guy? Indiana State Board of Health. Look, we're lucky if the city pays for cotton swabs. Yeah. Nora, I'm sending this off to the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta, but I need you to sign it. I don't know 
why we have to do this now? It was halfway home. Sorry, Dr. Martin. So I... why do we have to wear these masks? You say it's not TB, it's not Legionnaires. I not... didn't want to prejudice you. Okay, all right, all right, fine, fine. Now, let's get her over. Her chart indicated she might be an addict, but look. She got a tan wearing a bikini. You know, Dr. Hart, we don't get a lot of tan junkies around here. So standard IV marks in the arm. <laughs> Looks like they did a cardiac puncture. What do you make of this? Could be mosquito bites, bee sting. I got the same thing here. A bee sting would leave more erythema. Certainly not an injection. What about a flea bite? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. How anyone could call these uh, needle tracks would be on me. <laughs> That's what they usually see up in ER. Must be two. Dear God. This is one node. Uh, put on another pair of gloves. I'm gonna put on two pairs of gloves. Change masks. She has gram negative pneumonia. I know. Dr. Martin. Get out of here. But you heard what he said. Get the hell out of here. Gentlemen, get the organs out as quickly as possible. Then you'll each need two grams of streptomycin now and one every day for the next five days. I've got to fax the director of health control. Please keep this quiet. We don't need a panic. I want every available nurse here on the double. Bring everybody in off the streets now. What, what is it? It's the plague, Jake. It's the plague. Dr. Garber. Did you find the chief of staff? He's in Hawaii, but the director of health control is on his way. Mondays just get worse and worse. Seven, please. All right, everybody, listen up. Listen up, please. Okay, first things first. We've got to identify the girl. I've got a morgue shot of her. I'm sorry, but that's the best that I can do. Gail, call missing person, see what you can find out. Sure. Right? Dolores, get over to the address where the Jane Doe was found. See if you can ID her and trace any contacts. Right. Okay, we've set up medical stations right here in the hospital. Dr. Prescott. Streptomycin for everyone who came in contact with the girl. Two grams to start and then a gram every day for the next five days. Tetracycline for everyone else as a preventative measure. That includes everyone here in this room. Uh, okay, I think Dr. Hart wants to review the symptoms we're looking for. First, the bacteria will attack the lungs. Within the next 12 hours, the patient will experience chills and fever, as in the flu. Shortly thereafter, the symptoms expand to cover shortness of breath, sharp chest pains, and coughing. At this stage, it becomes extremely contagious. By the next day, wet coughing with blood, <coughs> delirium, madness, and shortly after, death. If it's caught early, it can be treated with large amounts of strep, and there is a small chance of recovery. But after the first day, the symptoms are irreversible, and death is inevitable. OK, now. If this is really the pneumonic plague, there's no vaccine. There's no treatment that will immunize us absolutely. Taking every precaution available will result in only an 80% prevention rate. So there is a very real risk here, and you should all be aware of that. And finally, we're not going to mention the word plague to anyone. If anyone asks, we're going to say that we are investigating a very dangerous and contagious pneumonia. All right, let's get to it. Vince. Nora. Hi. I'm glad you could come down. I really need a meeting with the mayor. When? Right away. Well, right now he's negotiating with the unions over the garbage strike. I assume this is your new associate? Uh, yes, Dr. Jake Prescott, Dr. Vincent Calafato, our illustrious director of health. Very nice to meet you, sir. Well, let's think about this for a minute. Uh, this young girl apparently had a bacterial pneumonia. Now, while that's very sad, we get these things all the time. Gram negative, doctor? Yes. Derelicts, drug addicts, I mean, they pass out, vomit, swallow the wrong way, the lungs become infected. Her x-rays don't conform to that diagnosis. I was at the autopsy, Vince, and I can give you my personal assurance the girl was no drug addict. Look, Dr. Califato, every physician, every nurse, every orderly that came in contact with this girl is at risk. These are your people, doctor. 
Let's try to stay calm, shall we? And uh, let's not call each other doctor so much, huh? Look, we don't know where this girl came from. We don't know who she is. You know, Jake, Jake, <clears throat> I've dealt with these things before in Africa several times. Now, these epidemics, honestly, they have a way of burning themselves out. And just how many people have to die to fit a qualified burnout? Vince, I'm afraid that if we don't get to the mayor, by the time the CDC gets back to us with the confirmation, it could be out of control. Or right, I can't base this decision on fear. I mean, I can't tell the mayor you want to see him just because you're afraid. Not because I'm afraid, because I'm terrified. I saw the body. Vince, this is the worst disease the world has ever known. It's wiped out entire civilizations. All right, all right. All right. I hope you're wrong. <laughs> He's not happy about this. He's trying to end the strike before the convention gets here. Deputy Mayor Capro, this is Dr. Hart, our chief epidemiologist. How do you do? Hi, pleasure to meet you. Vincent, you have to promise me not to distract him with this. Now, I need him at these negotiations. Capro, you know, the mayor and I have something in common. We both took an oath. The only difference is mine's about 3,000 years older than his. Good afternoon, Vince. Andy. Dr. Hart. How do you do? Please, sit down. So as far as you know, Dr. Hart, there's only this one case, and it has yet to be confirmed by the CDC. So far, yes, but it's so easily passed. A handshake, a sneeze, a cough. But the it's absence very... of other cases would tell against your diagnosis. Might even point to this being an isolated incident. Andy. Mr. Mayor, with all due respect, 10 years ago, we had a few isolated cases of another disease, and now we have 100,000 people dead from AIDS. I need police assistance, some emergency discretionary spending, and I need my detention powers increased. I want to put that girl's picture on TV to ID her. Dr. Hart, let me tell you my dilemma here. I have a convention coming into town. It's bringing in millions and millions of dollars in revenue. Now, I go on television, and I say that we have a case of plague in Manhattan. What do you think is going to happen? I don't think you should do that. I brought the mayor's task force report on emergency preparedness with me. Good, good thinking. Let's see what it says. Uh, New York City is 314.7 square miles in area. Please, come on, skip, skip. I'm sorry. Well, you know, this is really an excellent report. Yes. Uh, a, tornadoes, B, hurricanes, C, earthquakes. All right, sabotage, bridge collapse. Here it is, epidemics. Epidemics. Epidemics are considered to be beyond the scope of the task force of emergency preparedness. We'll just have to wing it. That's what the people pay me for. Yes to all the extras. No to running the girl's picture on TV. Every lunatic in Greenwich Village is going to say that they saw her. Dr. Hart, should this become more serious, I'm going to rest a little easier knowing that you're in charge. Thank you. Now you go ahead and do whatever you have to do, but please, do it quietly. Fair enough? Fair enough. What's going on? All right, it's all right. Nora? Hillary Daniels was the duty nurse the night that Jane Doe was admitted. She just came in with her two little girls. All three are showing symptoms. Get them up to isolation and be sure that everyone here has been medicated. to be taken somewhere else. Dr. Lipsky. Who the hell are you? I'm Dr. Prescott. A doctor. You've been exposed to a very dangerous and contagious disease. I need to know who you've been in contact with since you left the hospital. I haven't been in contact with anyone. <clears throat> I've been working for 48 hours straight. Check the call sheet, doctor. 
<clears throat> this is the flu, all right? Can't you see that? <clears throat> Bergman's roommate? Yeah, that's right. What's going on? He's really sick. I brought some of his things with me, but they... Do you know what he did when he got off work yesterday? Um, he whined a lot about his hours and he was. Were to you bed. home when he got there? No, I called him for messages. Okay, when did you have your first contact with him? It's this afternoon. What's going on? Mr. Chapman, uh, you've been exposed to an infectious pneumonia. Now, I'm going to treat you with streptomycin for five days. I regret having to detain you. Oh, you detaining me? For observation, yes. Well, doctor, I'm... He's gonna be okay, isn't he? I mean, David, he's, he's not gonna, like, die or anything, is he? Nurse, we're gonna do everything we can, Mr. Chapman. Come on, over here. Up here. Just roll your sleeve up. Relax your arm. Jake. What are we gonna do? Call security. Get me some officers down here, stat. Then we're going to close off this entire wing of the hospital and detain everyone here. Everyone. to remember <coughs> about the, the Republican method of government is... Ms. Stiles, are you all right? Is that the, the leaders are usually... Dobbs, Sarah Dobbs. This wasn't some street kid. Her family's super wealthy. Her parents are away, so she was home alone. I don't know. I'll find out. Who was on duty Friday night? Rafael Ortiz. He called in sick this morning. The doorman from Friday called in sick. I'll find him. It's a boarding pass, Jake. Wait, now, it might be all right. Yes, look, see? It was for Friday. She wasn't necessarily contagious while on board. But she could have been. No, listen, I just read a report about this. Airplanes exchange massive amounts of air while in flight. And catching a disease on a plane would be like, like catching it on a beach with a five-knot wind blowing. Gail, call the airline, get a manifest and a seating chart, and start checking the names of passengers. Call them, and if anybody's sick, damn! What? How did she get home from the airport? Did she take a cab? Did she take a bus? Nora. Yes. St. Sebastian's just called. Uh, a teacher collapsed in front of her summer school class, and they took her there. <sighs> she has all the symptoms. Now, I've detained everybody at the school, and they're cooperating so far. Vince, what was the teacher's name? Pauline Stiles. I've got a call into the mayor. I'm recommending a declaration of imminent peril. Gail, yeah. check for a Pauline Stiles on that flight. OK. What the hell are you doing here? Oh, I'm uh, quarantined. You're detained. You're not quarantined. He's the roommate of He's the He's a intern. reporter for the Village Voice. You told me you were David Bergman's roommate. 
I am David Bergman's roommate. I'm also a reporter with the Village Voice. Now, I'm not here to discuss my resume. Do you guys have an official comment on what's going on here? Does it have anything to do with AIDS? Mr. Chapman, we are dealing with a highly contagious bacterial infection. Now, we're trying to make sure that it doesn't work its way into the general population. And we are taking every precaution. It has nothing to do with AIDS. Uh, doctor, could you be a little more specific about... Dr. Hart? Kellen? Yeah? What's this? <coughs> I told you. I had a cold. The doctor gave me a prescription. <laughs> well, it worked really well, didn't it? That's so funny. Kind of ironic, isn't it? What? Well, when you told me that we were going to be spending a weekend in bed, I didn't know this is what you meant. Oh, well, it wasn't. But, uh, you seem almost happy about it. At least we're talking more, seeing how we really feel about each other. You're not going to start singing, are you? Feelings, whoa, ho, 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 feelings. Is this the speech you're giving in Washington on Wednesday? Yeah. We have seen the moral fiber of our country attacked by greed and self-centeredness, a disease not of the body, but of the soul. It's not the way I'm going to deliver it, okay? I'm going to take dramatic pauses, maybe lower my voice a little bit. Oh, you and Mike, I hate politics. <clears throat> <clears throat> Calvin, if I get this, <coughs> how did it start with a sore throat? What do you mean, if you get this? <coughs> of course you're going to get it. Who is? Soy Dolores Rosales, del Departamento de Salud. Busco a Rafael Ortiz, señor. No, 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 Rafael. Es que tengo esta dirección. There's no one here for you, okay? She's over there. No. I'm a doctor. That's what I want to be when I grow up. Dr. Hart, there's a Dolores Rosales on the phone for you. See you later, sweetheart. People, you understand? Jake, why don't you wait for the paramedics? If we're not down in a few minutes, come on up. Te dije que aquí no hay un Rafael. Váyase. Dolores, 
Kill these people, Rafael is very sick. He must go to the hospital. They all must go. Rafael is very enfermo. Tiene que ir al hospital. No, vamos al hospital. Adelaide, cállate, por favor. Rafael has a very dangerous disease. Do you understand? If you don't take medicine, you will all die. Siéntate. Adelaide, déjala. Siéntate. I said, sit. No. Listen, you. You macho idiot. I'm going to start giving shots here. Who wants to live? Quien quiere vivir? Let her go. 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 Let her Dolores medicate everyone in the room. Jake, stay there. So, you want to be a hero? I'm going to tell you a story. One night about two years ago, my husband Adam and I were walking home from a newsstand about half a block from our apartment. And a man came out from the shadows and asked Adam for his wallet, and Adam wouldn't give it to him, and now he's dead. And they got the wallet anyway. And that's New York, all right? I'm not impressed by what you did. The police were right outside the door, and that's what they're paid to do. This isn't Indiana. I've got to give you another dose of strep. The bacteria can go directly into your bloodstream. It's quite a bedside manner you have there. What? What is it? Rats. In the apartment. The guy was lying in the corner and looked like he had flea bites on his arm. Yeah, okay. What do you want first, the good news or the bad news? Oh, I want the good news, please. I need some good news. Yeah, the good news is New York City rats are not the right rats for transmitting the plague properly, okay? Their fleas do not harbor the disease that effectively. What's the bad news? The bad news is that doesn't mean they can't get the job done. There's 7.5 million rats in New York City. They use the sewers as their rapid transit system. All right, a flea bites a sick guy, jumps on a rat, bites it, the rat gets the plague, and then he runs off and plays with 7.5 million friends. So what do we do? We're gonna dust a 20-block area around the Ortiz apartment with a safe insecticide. We'll kill the fleas, capture some rats, and then check them for the plague. When this hits the papers, people are gonna start killing their own rats. If they do that, if they kill the rats first, the rats are gonna come flooding out of their nests, they're gonna be dying all over the place, and the fleas will jump on the nearest warm body. Like a person. Like a person. Okay, cats, what's your take on this? You're usually an optimist. But under ideal conditions, the rats could make for a major outbreak. What are ideal conditions? Close crowding, people living in basement apartments and cellars, and something that provides the rats with a readily available food source. Like a garbage strike. Like a garbage strike. I'll go dust. Andy, seriously, I think it would be foolish of us to think that we have this disease under control. There's still three people from Sarah Dobbs' flight unaccounted for, including a congressman. And there's an entire family up on East 104th Street who are infected. We could already have an epidemic on our hands. Few people in Spanish Harlem don't make an epidemic, Dr. Hart. Oh, oh my God. God. Well, what I mean by that No, I think we're all very clear on what you mean. It's a question of numbers no, here. Oh, 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 this is the attitude. Enough of that! Jay. Enough! I'm tired. I expect probably the good doctors are exhausted as well. Let's everybody just... Let's everybody just take a deep breath, please. I don't actually know you, do I? Dr. Jake Prescott. He works with me. 
Well, Dr. Prescott, I hope you realize that this meeting, the comments made in this meeting, and the advice you're giving me are all confidential. I won't be giving you any advice, sir. <laughs> Finally, I meet someone living in New York who doesn't want to give me advice. Jake's from Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I gather, Dr. Hart, that you're still very much in favor of a declaration of imminent peril. Yes, sir, I am. Vincent? I agree. Capro? Sir, if you declare a state of imminent peril, we will lose the convention. The garbage strike and the crime wave have already driven down tourism by 30%. I think the plague puts us a little over the top. Well, I have to say, Dr. Hart, that on the face of it, it seems that you have this contained. No, sir, the press is too close. If they find one case, there could be a panic and... Panic? I would think there would be a lot more panic from a declaration of imminent peril. I hate to go against a doctor's advice, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to agree with Capro on this. <sighs> Keep me informed. Mr. If Mayor, have you ever heard of the Egyptian port city of Sin? Excuse me. In 546 A.D., this same bacteria, Yersinia pestis, also known as the Black Plague, also known as the Black Death, appeared in the Egyptian port city of Sin. There were so many deaths, they couldn't dig enough graves for the people. So they took off the tops of towers and stacked the corpses inside. They put the dead bodies on ships and towed them out to sea and set them adrift. When it was over, over 100 million people were dead. Half the world. Half. Now, there is no vaccine for the pneumonic form of this disease. Treatment is only 80% effective, and that depends on whether you catch it before symptoms are shown. Otherwise, you're dead. And you think we have it contained. You think this is another unfortunate illness that affects social misfits and drug addicts and immigrants. Mr. Mayor, in five days, half of this city could be dead. Five days. That's what you're gambling with. something to drink in the refrigerator. I don't know what. <clears throat> Hi, Gail. It's Dr. Hart. Uh-huh. So that takes care of everyone but Congressman Phillips. Now, you've checked all the city hospitals, all the morgues, no John Doe's, right? What does his wife say? Well, if all else fails, we'll catch him at the airport when he leaves for D.C. Mm-hmm. Set up an observation team at Kennedy. Uh, yeah, put him on the limo and the cab companies. Maybe we'll even find the one that picked up Sarah Dobbs. Yeah, you need anything, you can call me at home tonight. Right. Okay, have a good night. Bye-bye. Nice tableware. You know, I have some nice stuff. Yeah. At my mom's in Ottawa. You're Canadian? Yeah. Originally, yeah. Okay. What? Bandage. Let's change that bandage. Oh, God. See, I came here to go to medical school. Because Adam was coming to New York to go to medical school, and I couldn't live without him. You know how it is when you're young. We had a little hole in the wall in Midtown. <laughs> it was really awful. Really? Ah! Oh! Yeah, no, it's, it's all right. I'm sorry. It's, just, it's just a little sore. It's... Okay. And I made a kind of a calendar from a big piece of butcher paper. Yeah? Mm-hmm, yeah. And I put our names on, and I drew a picture of the Empire State Building, 
And we kept count as the weeks went by of the days the city won and the days that we won. What about ties? There were no ties. Hmm. Well, how'd you end up doing? Well, let me put it this way. After a couple of months, we took the calendar down. But you didn't leave. No. No, we didn't leave. See, you've been here such a short time. Ten years ago, things were different. I'm not saying they weren't tough, but I don't know. Very slowly, things just began to deteriorate, and we built up a tolerance for it. You could walk right past a homeless person who was begging for money to feed her child. Or right past an old man in the park who was talking to himself. Forget all about neighborhoods who've gone under to the crackheads and the dealers. Lose a friend that aids and feel so helpless. You want to scream, but you don't know who to scream at. Horrible things happen at random. And no one knows who's in control anymore. So you just go numb inside. Maybe we can't stop it. Maybe we can't stop it, Jake. Maybe we can't stop it. <laughs> no, it's okay. <gasps> I'm really tired. Yeah. Um, look, I, I can go stay at the hospital. No. No, it's fine. No. It, uh, do you mind the sofa? No. Not at all. I'll, uh, I'll get you a blanket. Doctor. Dr. McNally to emergency. Excuse me. I'm sorry, sir. Now, you'd understand, my friend's up in isolation. I said, I'm sorry, sir. You? Yeah, um, I need to see the charts for everyone who was admitted into isolation today. Can I get you to access them for me? All right. I'm told there was a time when we could only access this by hand. Well, progress always seems to take me longer. Too bad.
Hi, Barry. It's me, Niles. Um, no. No, they won't let me up to see him. Look, I, I need you to, uh, to check something in my office, all right? Yeah, go in and get the medical dictionary on the second shelf and look up Yersinia pestis. Y-E-R-S-I-N-I-A. This is worse than the flu, Calvin. <clears throat> this is something bad. Maybe we should go to the hospital. No. No hospitals. <sighs> Can you imagine what the press would do to me if we checked into a hospital? What they would do to Mike? Hmm? <laughs> U.S. congressman checks into New York City hospital with another congressman's wife. You can explain that to your kids. Mm. I guess you're right. <clears throat> I guess it's just a flu. The deli downstairs cooks. Take a look at this. A plague on both your houses. So much for not alarming the public. I just talked to Gail over the hospital. There's no new cases, but uh, we didn't get to the Ortiz family in time. They all have symptoms. And the medical team that treated Sarah Dobbs all died during the night. Bergman, Lipsky, and Daniel's and her two little girls. Thanks. And we still haven't found our congressman, so I can only assume he's dead or he wasn't infected. Well, there's a third possibility. What's that? If he was already on an antibiotic of some sort. He could be lingering, that's right. Great homecoming. What are these guys doing here? Lionel probably looking for fleas and animal hair. They should wait outside. Yeah. Guys? Yes, ma'am? Why don't you take a break? I don't want Sarah's parents to see you when they walk in. They got a big enough shot coming as it is. We'll be back in an hour. Look at this. It's got film in it. Let's get it developed. Hey, who the hell are you? What's going on here? What the hell are you doing in our apartment? Sarah, are you home? Mrs. Dobbs, I'm Dr. Hart with the City Department of Health. I'm sorry to have to greet you this way. Do you have a warrant for this? N no. It's Sarah. Where is she? She contracted a very dangerous pneumonia. But she's all right. She's, unfortunately, no, she passed away Sunday night. Oh, God. I'm sorry. How many people have died? 
has a right to know. Yeah, I suppose that's true. I suppose that's why you're trying to break out of the hospital, right? To inform the public. But the phones here weren't working. We're thinking about going door to door. Yeah, and how were you thinking about informing the public? Maybe the same way you informed them about the AIDS crisis? The plague. That's a contagious disease, right? That's your department, isn't it? What did your department do about informing the public? And what about David? My roommate died here last night. What did you do to save him? Not enough, obviously. Panic. So I'm a human being. The treatment you're giving people, it's only 80% effective anyways. I could still get the damn disease and die. I would tend to think you'd already be exhibiting symptoms. Look, Niles, have you got any swelling, any soreness, fever, anything? No. How would you like to come with us? You can be beside us through this entire crisis. You'll get your own special view of what we're doing. Well, they're gonna, they're gonna charge me with impersonating a doctor. No, I'll get them to drop the charges. I can't guarantee you a favorable report. I'll write what I see. That's exactly what we want you to do. That's interesting, huh? It's a California ground squirrel. Wow. The pictures are back. Great. Hi, Lionel. Hey, Nora. I think there's one you gotta see. It's a California ground squirrel. Imagine how sick that squirrel must have been to let her hold it like that. What does a ground squirrel have to do with the plague? What, is he with us? Dr. Katz, this is Niles Chapman. I want you to bring him up to speed on what we're doing. You do. Mr. Chapman, there are known reservoirs of the plague in the rodent population out west. Until five days ago, it was moving in our direction, slowly, about a meridian a year. This is a very, very complicated organism. It's been around for more than four billion years, and it continues to evolve. We're not sure it can be eradicated. I spoke to Sarah's aunt in California. How is she? Shocked, but well. They came mm. across the squirrel the afternoon before they left the park. The afternoon before? So Sarah wasn't infectious? Not until the end of her flight. Also, they found the congressman's limo driver. Great. And Dr. Katz, they need you at 104th Street. I'm out of here. What about the airport? Anything? Nothing. Oh. Where the hell is Calvin Phillips? So, first she dropped off the sick girl. Right. And then, the congressman wanted me to drop him at Trump Tower. So that's where he stayed? I don't think so. I got the feeling he didn't want me to know where he was going. I'm gonna give you a shot of strep. And you're gonna have to take it for the next few days. Hey, hey wait a minute, wait a minute. Wouldn't I already be sick? Probably. But we can't take any chances. Take off your coat. Anyway, I... Hey, Jeff. Traffic attempting to get to the Hall Tunnel at this hour is backed up all the way across Canal Street and then down in both directions to the Williamsburg and the Bridge. A few people have actually... Sir, the uh, press are insisting that you make a statement. I'll make a statement. Tell them I'll make a statement as soon as I get all my reports in from all around the city. And that there is no danger to the public at this time. Tell yes, them sir. that. Yes, sir. Also, I want you to get up to Manhattan General. Try to put a lid on this, Capro. You want me to go to Manhattan General? Yeah. You're the one who kept on saying there wasn't going to be any epidemic here, aren't you? Well, why the hell is it still going on? Yes, sir. Hey, buddy, what's going uh, down here? Easy. We're just doing our job. Hey, 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 the rats get to get out of here, but we have to stay? Uh, yeah. get the hey, you tell me if that's right, huh? Take it easy. Human Keep beings should be treated better than rats. Take care. I'm just talking to you, okay? That's all. I'm just talking. Yes, yeah, so Lionel Cast for Dr. Hart. Hey, Lionel. How much time do you think you'll need? Well, about seven hours. God, this crowd out here does not look friendly. Well, just be careful. Have you found anything? No, no dancing rats, and we're getting further and further away from the Ortiz apartment. Come on, get the second crate. Uh, nothing new here either. So, uh, good news all around, huh? So go figure, as my father used to say. I don't know, maybe the mayor was right, huh? Well, call me later. All right, let's go. Let's go, let's get out of here. Hey, 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 you're leaving us here to die. Take it easy, man. We're doing our job. Okay, doing so job. Take it easy. Hey, hey, hey. Why don't you give me hey, some medicine? Come on, let's get these guys away. Come on. There's no danger here, all right? No, take, take it easy. Mind. Calm down. Just take my baby, no, please. Man, you're, get him out of here. Your me. baby is better off with you, okay? You're perfectly safe. All right? You're going to be fine. Come on, over here. Please. Take this
Our missing congressman hasn't shown up at the airport. But he's still holding a reservation on the last flight to Washington. So, we need to search the area where the limo dropped him off. Did we ever get a picture? Oh, yes. And I recommend calling in the police and reporting him missing. <sighs> Dolores, have you had any sleep? No, not yet. Do you mind if I take no. some time? Go ahead. We can do a few minutes without you. Thanks. Excuse me. Gail, has Capra returned any of my calls? Not yet. Where is he? I can't order police searches without his permission. No, what should we do about the press? I... 673 is now ready for reporting. All passengers should proceed through customs to gate 92. Attention, please. All passengers on the flight 77 for dead. Your flight has been delayed. Please report to the check-in desk for the issue of three and two closures. Okay. I'm gonna taxi you downstairs. Think you can make it downstairs? No. Thank you. Thank you. Calvin. Hmm? I love you. I thought we weren't allowed to say that to one another. I thought you didn't want Oh, me. go ahead. Say it. Okay. Say it. I love you. Of course you do. Of course you do. Well, Dr. Hart, you certainly got the word out, didn't you? I had nothing to do with it. You and the mayor refused to be honest with the public. I told you that the press would find out. Yeah, but where are all the new plague cases? 
Are there any new cases? There aren't. Your little epidemic is over. Now go out and tell the press you've got it contained. Oh, for God's sake. Listen, there are riots breaking out all over the city. Yes, Actual riots. Now it's time we put this thing to rest. Dr. Hart, I think you should come to the isolation ward right away. Gail? I think you should come. Now you're not going anywhere until we have this settled. We'll have this settled when you find me, Congressman Phillips. Dr. Hart! Excuse me. Aren't you uh, Deputy Mayor Capron? What do you want? Well, I was just curious that since you were prepared to call this crisis over, where exactly you um, obtained your medical degree? From Mayor Andrew Carmichael. I'm chief physician to the upcoming Democratic Convention. And I'm not going to let it die because of a bunch of doctors who can't make it in private practice. <laughs> you think what I just said is funny? Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people are going to think it's funny. from you. Stop it! Get her off of me! I'll have your job! You son of a bitch! I'll have your job, you, you bitch! Hey, I'll have your job! I'm filing charges against you! Listen, doctor, I think she got my jaw. I, uh, uh, I need an x-ray or something. Oh. I'm not a doctor. I'm a reporter. Best of luck, Mr. Capro, in whatever field of endeavor you eventually decide to pursue. God. And all access routes to Lincoln Tunnel have been closed as well. The police have issued repeated warnings. Oh, this is East Side Hospital. Now listen, I've got to go. I've got to go and make my speech. <coughs> really, I have to go to Washington. Chair, sit down. Okay. Okay. Sit. Charlie. Charlie, can you hear me? Charlie. Listen, you're gonna be fine, okay? You'll be just fine. Thanks for waiting. It's your daughter, man. Yeah. JFK, step on. It's going to take a while. Radio says traffic's backed up everywhere. Just get me, okay? I'll do what I can. Police have issued repeated warnings urging all citizens to stay indoors. Nevertheless, all major arteries are She was my friend, and I sent her right into the middle of it. All right. This disease doesn't have a brain. It can't pick and choose who it wants to attack and how it will respond to treatment. Now, you know that. Yeah. It could have just as easily have been you. Yeah. You know, you don't have to carry this all by yourself. And if your burden is heavy. What is that something they say in Indiana? Oh, yeah. No. That's just one of our many interesting little colloquialisms. We have another Jane Doe on the east side. Okay. I told you it was going to be like this, man. You're lucky we're moving at all. I'm going to miss my flight. Everybody's trying to get out of the city, man. What do you want me to do? You don't seem to understand. I have to be in Washington. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
someone had systematically removed all of the ID out of her wallet, and the man who brought her in just vanished. We didn't know what was wrong with her at the time. And where was the wallet? Oh, in her purse. She had food delivered. I got an address. Can you finish here? Where are we going? About two blocks from where the limo dropped off Congressman Phillips. What's going on? Oh, we got an address. We did not want to Mayor's unduly alarm the citizens and visitors of our great city. I would appeal to those attempting to leave the city, please understand you are in no danger. Anyone involved in non-essential travel should stay indoors. Riding and demonstrating will be of no constructive use for any of us. This is a time for calm. I appeal to you with understanding for one another. We will come through this. I missed my plane. It's the traffic, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. How far are we from Penn Station? Eight, ten blocks. Fine, fine. Let's go there. We got the airport. Yes, I just got word he missed the flight. Okay, so where is he? I might have an address. We're on our way now to check it out. She shouldn't be up there. It's a violation of the Constitution. Really? Did Congressman Phillips tell you that? I told you I don't know a Congressman Phillips. He wasn't here? Then what about this prescription bottle with his name on it? I really don't know. When he left, did he have a woman with him about 35, 40? I'm sorry. Congressman Phillips has been exposed to the plague. He is highly infectious. If you came close to either one of them, the only chance you have is an antibiotic that we have in this bag. But if you didn't come close to him, then you got no problem. I, 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 I called him a cab a couple of hours ago. He, he left for the airport. But we know he never made it. Get the cab company on the phone. We're going to talk to that driver. That driver will need to be medicated. No, no. We've confirmed that he was dropped at Penn Station. We think he's taking the next train to Washington. You're too late. The last train to Washington just left. You want me to alert the next station? No, you have to stop it now. Divert it somewhere. I need everyone held on board the train. All right. 
what I can. Listen, what if he's not on the train? What if he's in the station someplace? Get over to Penn Station and seal it off. The whole damn thing. Can they do that? They have to. Oh, this I gotta see. We all could get it. He's got it? He's got it. Right. He's got it. Excuse me, uh, what, what's going on here? Is there a problem here? It's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone please remain calm. You must stay on this train until you have been medicated. There! Right there! Congressman Phillips! what they did to the rats. <laughs> oh, man. This is not good news, cats. Not good news. Yeah, really, this is terrible news. The city let this happen to me. But I got some good news, too. What's your good news? My brother's a lawyer. <laughs> hey, Chapman, Vincent came by this morning and showed me the paper. You sure went to town on the mayor and Capro. I know. Capro's resigned, and the governor is calling for an investigation of the mayor's response. Uh-oh, there goes another beautiful friendship. So, no new plague cases in two days. I think we might have stopped it. How many dead? Of the plague, 22. Another 46 from riots and panic. Yeah, well, it could have been worse. It should have been better. So what are you going to do? Are you going to stay with the city or what? Chapman here has made you out to be some kind of hero. I don't know. I really don't. I hear she's considering some kind of an offer from Indiana. Shut up, Niles. Just as long as you don't move out of the city. I mean, I know you'd never consider living anywhere else. You know, I mean, how could you? 
After all, we got the Giants and the Jets and the Mets. And we got Shakespeare in the Park. And Broadway and the Chrysler Building. That's oh, right. Yeah, this is a great spot. I'll and, and take and Manhattan. The zoo. The yeah, and the Botanical Gardens. Island, island, too. It's lovely going through the zoo with all of you. 